first things first, I'm not really. Hey everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Big Idea 3. Yeah! So we are going to uh, skip out on 3-1 because that was the first podcast that you watch. So, and we did a little bit of the uh, molecular polarity today. So we, and it talked about dispersion, H bonding, dipole, dipole. So that stuff's already done. Um, so the rest of the big idea three part is a little bit of solid. So this is a review. So ionic bonds, we had pictures and it's all kinds of great stuff in there. Um, they have strong bonds. The lattice is made, or made of full positive and negative ions. Um, there's Coulomb's law for strength. Charges are the most important. So remember Coulomb's law is bond energy is Q1. Q2 over radius squared. And it's proportional to that. Okay. Um, ionic compounds are brittle. And because when they slide, there's causes of repulsion. They have high melting points and boiling points, which means they have strong bonds. Um, many, but not all of them are soluble. Um, water is attracted. Well, the ionic compound is attracted to the positive and negative end of water. So remember how we've got positive, negative, and then we've got the water molecules that attack those. They conduct as aqueous or liquid because the ions can flow, which means they don't as water, as, sorry, not as a solid because the ions can't flow. Polyatomic ions can be the lattice points. So this is the one thing that's a little bit new. Um, you can have polyatomic ions as the lattice points. Network covalent molecules. Again, same thing, carbon or silicon with four beautifully spread out covalent bonds, meaning a big old bond angle. Oh! Look at that bond angle. It is so big. All right. It is the strongest diamond and quartz because many bonds have to break. And again, that bond angle is pretty. Think of it as one very big molecule. Very high melting point, boiling point. Very strong, hard to break, but still never conducts. Molecular solids, I got a little bit more into this now. Um, covalently bonded solids are held together through intermolecular forces. The molecules do form a lattice, but the molecules form a lattice. So when you look at, this is carbon dioxide, this red and black thing. See how it kind of makes a structure where the lattice points are molecules? This one doesn't show it as, as well, but the lattice points are molecules of the little purple solid things. And that's even harder to see, but you get the idea that those particles are a lattice. Forces holding them together are weak. They have low melting point or boiling point, and they have typically no or very small charges. Coulomb's law, very small. Hey, that would be if it was polar. They also never conduct electricity. They're sometimes very large biomolecules or polymers. So just be aware of that. Metallic solids. Yeah, 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 yeah. Same stuff. Same picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. Biomolecules. So sometimes you get these enormous molecules that they just kind of go, I'm going to call it a ribbon. Whee! And show the different parts to it. Okay. There are large molecules like proteins and DNA that have intermolecular forces with themselves. So if you look closely at this, we have a benzene ring and we have C's and H's. So this is nonpolar and this is nonpolar. It shows our C's and H's. Yep. So this interaction right here would be dispersion. Okay. Now over here on this part, we have an H bond, right? And then how, see how we talked about how you can have an oxygen with a lone pair? So the type of bonding that would be would be an H bond. All right. Now, something new, something else new. How exciting. Solids, liquids, and gases. Woohoo! So solids vibrate. So solids can have more energy, a higher temperature, vibrating, than liquids, translational motion, and gases shooting all over. So solids, I think if I just say I have a particle and I have a particle and they vibrate, they're not moving over each other, and that makes sense. If I have a liquid, I have this particle and this one, and they cross over each other, that's what translational motion means. Trans means across. They move across each other. And gases are also translational motion, but they are shooting all, 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 all over the place. Solids are incompressible, so you can't squish them into a smaller space. Um, and then I just want to talk about a solid frying pan at 95 and air at 20. The solid has more kinetic energy 
and the air has less, assuming comparable masses, right? So remember, kinetic energy is mass and um, velocity. So more, I'm going to add average in the word here because that's really what I want because temperature is average, less average. Boy, that sounds depressing. Um, you're going to have to identify the type of solid from images. So this guy right here, see I've got big positives and negatives, is ionic. This right here, see my electrons are flowing, is metallic. This one right here is my network covalent. And how did I know that? So this one, I misspell covalent. This one, my electrons are flowing all over. That's how I could tell that's my metallic. This one has many bonds. And then these guys as a group are all um, just regular old covalent. Covalent. Okay. So the lattice point would be this. So you should be able to see a bunch of those. And I hope you can. I know I can. My lattice points here would be this molecule. Okay. Probably I2 because it's purple. If it's not purple, I'm sorry. I'm colorblind. This guy right here is S8. So it's really, it's harder to see this guy, but this is S8 and it's a solid. So if I could see a string of eight that it would bundle it together, ah, there's one, right? So they're hard to see when they're clumped together like that. But the lattice points are molecules. All right. Liquids have translational motion. They cross over each other. They're still densely packed, but they cross over each other. Woo, right? If surface particles have enough energy, they can evaporate and turn into a gas. So if this one particle right here is enough to go it all the way up into a gas, and then remember gas particles wee 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 all the way home. Okay. Liquids are incompressible. They can't be squished into a smaller space. And that's it. Gases. Gases have overcome attractive forces and act essentially independently. So that means this guy right here is not impacted by the other ones. Mostly empty space. Um, exaggerate the space. So notice how this has some compressible space. Yeah, I have some empty space in here if I were to color it in. It would really be like 10 times more empty. Okay. Um, imagine if somebody really lame threw a party. Ludicrous. Um, and no one showed up. Oh, man. So that'd be it. High speed. So the particles are super fast. Um, but again, that high speed means independent particles. So when you talk about one particle at a time, you can think of it as being fast, you know, faster because if we're talking about speed, kinetic energy equals one half mv squared. So because this mass is very light, so one particle it can go very quickly at different temperatures. Rapid random straight line motion, that's the way they describe it. They do bump into each other and they are compressible. And that is it for today, my friends. Shut up. No, seriously, you shut up. Yeah, we're done.